seasons are changing. So I'm soaking up these calm sunrises while we can. Well, good morning from Bowen. John's still fast asleep, but I thought I'd quickly just wrap a towel around me and take you outside so I could film the beautiful sunrise for you. You wouldn't know it now, but cyclone season is knocking on our door. Storms are brewing in the distance. I've been here once before, but in another life. The rain feels like pins on your skin. My previous life, when life was a little more chaotic. Expected to make A few years ago, before I resigned as a TV journalist, I was here in Bowen reporting on Cyclone Debbie, which killed 14 people and caused $3.5 billion in damage. So being here now and living on a boat, vulnerable as cyclone season approaches, has me feeling somewhat nervous. You've been here once before, haven't you? I can't forget. What was happening last time you were here? Well, my cameraman and I were up just on the ledge there recording a piece of camera and... Right now, Cyclone Debbie is 85 kilometres offshore. Yeah, it was pretty windy and wild. Is my cameraman for real? It was, yeah, it was pretty insane actually. The, the Category 4 Cyclone was just off the coast and bearing down on us and it was pretty intense. So, as you can see, that's probably not, that's not a good idea. After it swept through and wreaked havoc here on Bowen, we came back and yeah, there were just so many boats like impacted and decimated. And... Power was quickly cut as the cyclone Zai crossed over the coast. As the storm was passing, we had to continue live crosses from our hotel because it was too dangerous to venture out. And with no power, we lived off non-perishable food for days. A lot of people's homes were devastated. Planes were turned upside down. Even the Prime Minister of Australia arrived on a helicopter and... and um... You met him, hey? Yeah, yeah. The resilience of the community is backed up by the whole nation. Witnessing 215 kilometre an hour winds, I know I never want to experience that on our boat to Kana, but we are now approaching cyclone season. Holy crap! Don't want to spill the beans either, but we are in for some epic storms in episodes to come. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss these upcoming episodes. <gasps> that was massive, that one. But today we have blue skies. So we're going to lock up our tender and walk to the main strip. It's a little sleepy here with just 17,000 residents, but I'm keen to show you what this true blue Aussie town looks like. We find ourselves starting from scratch. Bowen is a seaside town with plenty of fair dinkum Aussie pubs. Last time I was here, people were taking shelter in them and sleeping on the floor. And I kid you not, they were cheering ahead of the chaos. Thank you very much. Some blankets. And lots of beer. A, a fridge full of beer there also. You see, this is a mining and agriculture town and it's home to the big mango. It is hot. It's also home to millions of these guys. Spotted something interesting from the from the coast. There's thousands of them. These guys are native to Australia. They're called soldier crabs because they form like armies. You can see them trying to bury themselves. There are literally thousands of them. I've never seen anything quite like it. You can hear them scuttling if you listen really carefully. Oh my gosh, this has to be the funniest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Anyway, back to the storms that are heading our way. So tropical cyclone season starts now in November and runs for the next six months. I know, six whole months. And this year, authorities are estimating 11 cyclones to impact Australia in that time. Now, I took this video of Bowen today, but this is when it was being smashed by Cyclone Debbie. 
Winds got up to 160 knots and the system dumped half a foot of rain. So with the season creeping up on us, we have some urgent repairs we have to make on our boat to Kana. So we're going to head back to the marina, jump on our tender. Oh my God. But on the way, John spotted something near the dumpster of all places. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, high field, optional extra. Great. Every boat should have a beat back. for the primer. So we're just um, doing some boat work on anchor here. It's a nice little anchorage with some nice smooth water. We've had some strife for this window ever since we bought the boat. Part of the deal was supposed to be resealed and they had a go at it in Melbourne. I think it wasn't their first time having a go at it and unfortunately sealant just didn't bond well to the fiberglass or the polycarbonate window. So this time we're gonna try it again but using some primer. $90 a bottle. I figure it's a good time to get this window fixed once and for all. Got some friends joining us next week and there's some rain forecast which is the first rain we've had in months really isn't it? Good luck! So together John and I worked as a team or at least we tried to as he squeezed in the sealant and I had to shape it and clean up the edges. But thank goodness time lapses don't capture audio because this task tests relationships. What did you think? Find out tonight when it rains at one o'clock in the morning. Not easy. Terrible. Not too bad. Ugh. Now our next goal is to sail further south because our boat to Kana isn't completely insured in these waters if a cyclone forms. You see, according to the fine print on our insurance, there's this imaginary line round about here. And if you're south of it by the start of the cyclone season, we can relax knowing we're covered. So we're going to get going tomorrow. We're expecting decent winds to put out our Jenica and we haven't had the guts to use it yet. So we're gonna to need to do some repairs on it and then we're gonna try it out for the very first time. John found a spinnaker in our sail locker. We are really, really excited to try it out. And there's only one problem. There is a hole in the sock. So we have a sailing repair kit. I'm going to try and repair the hole. I've rehemmed dresses and clothes and my late grandma taught me how to sew, but this is obviously completely different, completely new. The needle's a lot larger and the thread is a lot thicker and waxed. Yeah, it's really heavy. But before we get going, we're going to enjoy one last local meal fresh from the sea. We have got this little place to ourselves, don't we? Uh, what do you got there? Fresh Australian wild caught prawns. I wonder if people watching this from the US wonder why we call them prawns. Shrimps. It's weird how that ad said put another shrimp on the barbie. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. Mine in Australia says shrimp. No. But one of our most famous movies, Australia, you know the one starring Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman? Well, part of that was filmed right here on the beachfront in Bowen. Oh, they recreated Darwin. It was directed by Baz Luhrmann, who recently directed Elvis. This was where they did it, over here. This was the set for Australia, the grass area. Meanwhile, back on Takana, John was kicking back on his newfound throne like an A-list celebrity. So I'm sitting in my jocks, having a sunset beer on the bow. Life of luxury. I can't believe you of all people won't wear clothes from an op shop, but you're happy to take a beanbag from the side of a dumpster and sit on it. Well, the beanbag's not on your balls, is it? <laughs> and on that note, it's time to get going and to find out if those sewing skills of mine are up to the test when we put out our newest sail. We're hoping our Jenica will sail us all the way to the Whit Sundays where we're going to meet some friends. We want to take them to some islands we haven't been to before, including the widely popular Hamilton Island. Highest 2.5, it's going to go up 300. Excited to show you if we can get it up. We have been wanting to do this since we purchased Takana. We just had to wait for the right conditions, and being the first time that we put it up, I wanted it to be just right. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Are you hoping it's going to work? Yeah, <laughs> I do hope it works. <laughs> can you just slow us down just a tiny bit? Yeah. Over you 
electric winch. I actually have no idea what to expect. Neither do I. Ready? Yep. I don't even know what this is going to look like. Ready? Yep. Oh my gosh. Can you pull the tagline? Quick. Tagline is. Holy shit. That is insane. Oh my gosh. So big, I can't even get it all in shot. That is so spectacular. So a Jenica is perfect for downwind sailing. As you can see on our instruments, the apparent wind is coming from our port quarter. It's filling the enormous sail and helping to propel us forward. Wow. <sighs> Just slow down, but we're doing uh, five knots in 5.2 knots of true wind. So now we got to talk about how we're going to get it down. We've just turned the engine off. But if the wind picks up quickly, you know, we don't want the same confusion we had trying to look up. Oh yeah. It okay. was a little confusing. The tack line sheet, clue, all these new commands and names that come with learning a new sail. And then yes, the wind picked up. So we're right on the edge of the limit of what we want. It's always the wind's a little too light, the wind's a little too strong, the angle's too deep, it's a little rainy. But today everything lined up. But we've had it out for about four hours and we've been doing about over eight knots boat speed most of the time. So we've covered a lot of ground, it's been good. And the wind's been pretty steady. Uh, it is backing a little bit and it's now sort of up to the point where we're thinking about putting it away shortly. But yeah, it's been good, hasn't it? Yeah, but what goes up must come down, right? That's right, except for house prices apparently. <laughs> All right, so we know what we're doing. Yep, so I'm taking that off about You're going to ease that, metre and a half, and is the sail just going to flog like this? Yeah. Careful, because it might go loose all of a sudden, and then it might pull tight again, so just be careful. Be careful, okay. Yeah, okay, is it filming? Yeah. I'll tell you when. Okay. So this is the very first time we have ever used this Jenica. And if you have any tips, would love to hear them. Leave your comments below. Keep going. At the time, we just had to figure it out ourselves. Yep. We tried to turn the boat and blanket the Jenica with a mainsail to help collapse it, but it didn't really work. Essentially, we're trying to get it into a position where John can put the sock over the sail. Can you let the tack out more? But the more we ease the lines, the further the sail moved forward, continuing to pull us forward. Let it ride out. But we just couldn't get it to come down. It was stuck. Let the clue out more. The other one. I think it's stuck. But we kept trying. We were determined to snuff this sail. Let out more. And then... <laughs> relief. With the wind picking up, the anxiety of not getting this sail down was making me so nervous to the point where you can hear your heart beat and thumping in your ears. Oh. Thanks, well done. Wow, that was a bit scary, uh, wasn't it? Not sure how to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah, but it made me realise that we can fly that kite a long way out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Coming up next week, we have company. I cannot believe we're leaving. Our friends jump on board. We spot a vessel on the rocks. Crazy. In the Whit Sundays. <gasps> we experience our first storm of the season. White caps out here. Really? Yeah, the season has definitely changed. And take on Hamilton Island, the Hawaii of Australia, hiking included. So hit subscribe and join us for some cold ones on the beanbag. Yeah, my new special spot. <laughs> Uh, just rigged up this little tarp, it's getting hot, and back to good Sundays.